Welcome back, everyone, to The Chosen, Season 3, Episode 5, Part 2, Clean, uh, a good one. So uh, we have kind of a weak panel here. Okay. <laughs> but we'll be back right <laughs> after the show. So enjoy The Chosen. thing with Eden in the beginning where she's losing the baby and then we have all this joy in the middle of this thing and then we go back to sadness right at the end I thought it was a real dichotomy that's like whoa come on I just want the joy part yeah you know? I even like how they maybe not this episode as much but in some of the previous episodes how they portray that with Jesus character a lot how you can sense the weight and struggle he sometimes feels. And I, I love that they show that because it just shows the, the humanness. And so you're able to relate and that he's feeling both the joy but also maybe the burden and mm -hmm. struggle too. Sure. And the surprise to him when the power comes out of him, when, when Veronica touches his tassel and he, he doesn't know how to, he's just shocked as anybody you know mm -hmm. he's like what is happening to me right mm -hmm. here right now um but his his surprise was almost as big as hers you know mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah that one he says how it was her faith that saved her not not his clothes not his clothes yeah. and, uh which that scene portrays it really well like the power coming out of him because of her faith not because he chose to like turn around and mm -hmm. touch her or encounter her, though he does have to but I thought the the end of their scene in the street was was really powerful where he said you have blessed me today mm -hmm. so it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like I guess I didn't think of the power leaving him so much as he was this conduit between God the Father where mm. he's actually He's receiving kind of the full brunt of, of the blessing. And she has this healing, obviously, of this terrible affliction. But the that phrase that you have blessed me today and, I don't know, makes you think about what have I done today or this week or since the beginning of Lent to have blessed mm -hmm. Christ today. And I don't know what my answer would be, and I think that's kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of like all of us. Yeah. I like that she says, I'm sorry that I disturbed you. And he says, it was a welcome disturbance, my favorite kind. Like just to the point we were talking about during the actually watching the film, like how cinematic that is and how they really put effort behind that to show like what, what a jolt it was. Um, but I just love his response. He's just like, no, this this is the best kind. These are the best kind of surprises. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. throughout the whole series and all the seasons, you see so many different people. They're sort of like conversion, I guess, and um, some quick and some slow. And I love that they portray that in so many different ways because I think we can all find someone somewhere along the way that we relate to in our own faith journey and Joe you kind of mentioned um, Simon and uh, Gaius the soldier and just kind of the evolution of their relationship but also the evolution of like him throughout the series and um, sort of this curiosity that he has mm -hmm. that keeps him kind of coming back in this like subtle way he's sort of helping protect and allow their ministry to continue. And so it's really neat to watch that kind of unfold, but then in particular when him and Simon are together and just, I was shocked that he was the one helping him fix the cistern because oh, yeah. I thought he was going to bring in like all these soldiers to help him do mm -hmm. it. So sort of this like servant leader coming out and um, them having real conversations about mm -hmm. faith or relationship and um, in sort of this un, unthreatening way like Simon isn't 
telling him, like, you have to believe in Jesus. He's just kind of listening. And so mm-hmm. that's a good e- example of, like, how conversions happen in our, our lives, is. these sort of subtle ways and You're curious listening and, and yeah. curiosity. He's doing, like, the best form of evangelization, just mm-hmm. casually getting to know him. It is. Hanging out with him, helping him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they it basically is. had a Cabrini community at the cistern. <laughs> 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 but I did think to the point of Gaius and his role, um, it was subtle and, you know, they framed it up perfectly. You know, he was the middle of the shot and there was a soldier on either side and he kind of just gestured to them, hey, just, just stand down. And then even at the end, just this look of kind of pure confusion on his face. Mm-hmm. Not, not anger, not you know there there wasn't any sort of uh looking down on the crowd or anything of that it was just kind of almost pure confusion on his faces what just happened and mm-hmm. what is going on mm-hmm. yeah i took it as almost like disappointment that he missed it like he was like excited to kind of like be with simon so like maybe he was gonna sneak in and witness and then there's so much crowd and stuff, so he's not going to get involved in that. But, oh, gee, yeah. like, I saw something, but I sort of didn't see something. I'm not really sure what just happened. You think mm-hmm. it's funny that he doesn't ask questions, but he's so curious. Right. He doesn't want to let on that he's kind of right. believing this, which is also kind of like Rabbi Yusuf mm-hmm. is kind of the same yeah. way. Yeah, he's my favorite. Yeah, and, and Jarius is the same way, yep. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not now, but, right. but he was, you know. Even guys' his relationship with Matthew in how mm-hmm. he ha- he's sort of this like silent guardian of Matthew, but I think the same happens a lot of times, at least in my experience in my own life, and maybe you guys can relate, where you sort of see someone in your life having a spiritual encounter experience, a bit of a conversion of heart, and coming, you know, to know their faith, a relationship with Jesus, and so He's sort of this, like, passive friend, protector watching it, but, like, that slow Mm -hmm. watching it, maybe cautiously, is maybe starting to convert him a little even, too. And so I I think that's pretty cool how often do we think about the people in our lives who we look at and see the way they exude joy or community, and we want to emulate it, and so... um, that sort of ex- silent example, even though Matthew probably has no clue he's doing that. Right, mm-hmm. uh, right, but exactly. He's watching him. Oh, he definitely he's has noticing. no clue. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's busy. The subtleness of the things that they do in this is so amazing to me. And one, the one I caught in this was um, where they're looking for Jesus, and uh, I don't know who said it because I didn't write it down, but his men often don't know where he is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I thought, sometimes that happens to me. You know, he's there, but it's not his fault. But sometimes I don't know where he is. You and know? they were physically with him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought that was a jubilee too. Right. And they lose track of him. Yeah, yeah, and don't know where he is. And, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of happens to all of us, I think, sometimes. I think his expectation of us is the same. We should be out amongst the people working evangelizing we should know he's there with us but if we forget that he's still there but we should still be out working yeah yep i the scene with um when jairus comes first meets jesus and the very first thing he says is i know you i that Mm -hmm. moved Mm -hmm. me yeah. And then he repeats it again. I right. know you. Yeah. Because yeah, Jesus asks him, like, you've never met me. How do you have this much faith? And he just repeats it again. I know you. Yeah. Well, he read all the Sermon on the Mount stuff, too, mm-hmm. secretly. So. Did you notice the difference, though, with the Sanhedrin? I know who you are versus mm-hmm. I, know I know you. you. Mm-hmm. It's, that personal it was, relationship. Well, it was just, it was different. It was not as direct a statement. It was a. Yeah, I, 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 I've heard of you. I read, yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Nice pickup. Thanks. That is a good one. I'm pretty good at this. I'm glad I told you to say that. 
<laughs> one of the things that <laughs> oh yeah sorry i forgot that yeah that was all chris I to chris. yeah you yeah. passed out all these notebooks which were <laughs> have been really helpful thus far <laughs> i so kind of building off that though then he keeps going i don't know i've been just stuck with me so much but then what i love is jesus's response and he's done this in other episodes he always calls someone to to be like level with him like tells them to look at me in this case he says stand mm -hmm. with me yeah uh but in just a episode before maybe a few before he kept saying oh, look at me mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so he always has this like intimate encounter and i um was at my brother and sister-in-law's house and my nephew is like two and a half and he did something he wasn't supposed to and i'm just kind of sitting back <laughs> it's cool to observe um him, my brother being a parent, but it was this really cool moment. My nephew did something wrong, and my brother said, no, you can't do that. And my nephew, you know, turned to that sort of, like, scared, you know, shameful. Mm -hmm. And my brother just said, look at me. And Morrison looked at him, and he said, uh, it's okay you just can't do that but i love you can i have a hug and he <laughs> hugged him and it was like this such a cool moment so that scene reminded me of that same sort of sure encounter and he had veronica do the same thing look at he said, yeah. look up look at me mm -hmm. i love this scene um when they're eating to joe's point earlier about jesus being a big foodie um but when they're eating and he tells the about the wine bag and he talks about how he is like new wine. Like it's not mm -hmm. gonna fit within these old rules. And I thought that was so cool. But I also love that they were all like, yes. We don't get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what, and, I, and I've read that, you know, we've all read that gospel before. Yeah. And you know, I think I've always thought I kind of got it. But the way he explained it here was, what I'm bringing will not fit into the old framework. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What didn't you just say that? <laughs> well, it's a metaphor. Wine, I like riddles. <laughs> yeah, really. We call those metaphors. Yeah. Wine schmine. Just say that. Um, <laughs> one person that I I loved in this episode who is on the the not subtle end of the spectrum is Zebedee. Mm -hmm. He's just oh, he's, so he's just got this passion when he's talking to to James and John and. I mean, I think for probably a lot of us across the Midwest or people who are immigrant families, you know, so much of, you know, what the parents are doing is because of what they know and what they can provide for their children so that they can go off and do, follow their passions. And just the ability of him at this stage in his life to say, everything that I've been waiting for has happened. Mm -hmm. So now I can let go of these earthly sort of survival basic needs and I can move into this sort of passion filled adventure yeah. in, the, in this olive. I've uh, been waiting for the Messiah forever. Yeah. yeah. And I just like that flip of kind of knowing that he spiritually is nourished and taken care of that he can kind of do something different with the time he has left on this earth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he says, yeah. now I'm free to try something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is the thing we talk about. That's like the encounter of the Holy Spirit. It's a spirit of freedom that we should feel free when we encounter God, not burdened. constrained or yeah. burdened. Do you mean mm -hmm. that in Alpha? Uh, no, I don't <laughs> think so. No. <laughs> I you know, the, 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 joy, the joy of him saying, yes. he chose yeah. you. Oh, yeah, those two, to yeah, the two, to the, to, oh, that was just, and you could just tell he was filled with as much joy as you can get, you know? Yeah. I like that they paralleled that scene of Zebedee talking about the Messiah coming with the disciples asking Jesus about fasting mm -hmm. and him asking why they fasted. Mm -hmm. And like now is a time for celebration, like you'll do that later. But just those two different points of talking about like Jesus being there, present right now. Yeah. That whole scene of uh, 
you know, when they asked him about fasting, I think they were waiting for him to say, I haven't eaten for 40 days. Eight hours. Eight hours. Overnight. sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is a real fun guy. Mm hmm That's fun, too, just to see. I often, like, kind of ponder their uh, dynamic as a friend group and thinking of like your own friend group that oh, you have inside jokes and you have kind of this banter with each other and uh, just what that must have been like to their humor and how did I'm sure they pranked each other and sure somebody's they always Duncan Matthew right. in the water yeah Poor guy. they're playing <laughs> chicken just the bluntness now compared to what you know if we go back to the very first season when they're being called and nobody wanted to speak up and be like, I don't, I don't get anything that he's saying. Now they're just around the table like, I'll be first. I have no idea what you're talking <laughs> yeah. about right now. And then he's yeah. like, let me explain it again. And they're still just yeah. nothing there. Yeah. Well, you expect him to be all pious and very serious. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, taking notes. And, and like John and James fighting like, like brothers. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. they really were. Yeah, Sons of thunder. Yeah, there's yeah. One, one of the episodes where they're all arguing at the camp. And uh, one of them looks over and they're like, I, this is a, what we call love. Yeah. And they're all just fight, bickering with each other. Yeah. But you, you think about it in the context of your own life with like siblings or friends and um yeah it's just kind of fun to but my to favorite see. scene and i mentioned this while we were watching it was right before he was uh healing uh Charis's little girl and he looks up and he kind of smirks like i got this i got this covered i know i know i do and he didn't really laugh or smile but it was kind of a very confident, <clears throat> I'm going to do this, you know. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. He kind of, <clears throat> a lot of his facial expressions kind of to the point of the friend group is, you know, like in school, you'd be sitting there like taking a test and you'd kind of look over at your friend and kind of smirk and, like, <laughs> you know, like, oh crap, like we are so in trouble, like we did not study the right, you know, just like that, like, unspoken yeah. like right. entire language yeah. that and it's it's building between us as the viewers with right with the way that Jesus is portrayed but then obviously amongst the disciples as well which is you kind of you like you feel like you're at the table you feel like you're in that crowd mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the wink of Yusuf when uh, he was talking to Jarius and he said well I heard it from you from someone and yeah <laughs> he gives him a little wink yep <laughs> One of the things, and you hear different lines throughout different episodes, but these prayers they say, whether it's before a meal or mm -hmm. whatnot, and I, I, how we use those, I assume, prayers that are from Jewish roots, but they're, we hear them in parts of the Mass. Mm -hmm. And I love that sort of continuity yeah. and that tradition there. Yeah. Um, because as you see it in the film then when you go to mass and you hear it again it you sort of think of it in a different way this sort of intimate way of how they must have experienced that prayer line and yeah and, and then just to think that it's been prayed for that long yeah i wish father was here because he probably knows a lot about yeah. that so <laughs> i know too but i'm not going to say it right yeah now, so you might know a few of the words <laughs> by heart <laughs> and no matter what you know um and this is so true for all of us you know, Veronica and Jarius' little girl and Jarius himself, they got healed because they had faith. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus says, you know, he says, I, I didn't do this. Faith, your faith, your belief did this, you know. Mm -hmm. If you have that, it's all good, always, you know. Well, one of our viewers is saying that we've all been like those that were healed when we turn our problems over to Christ and somehow say, we need you to lead us and help get us through these times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, please send in your uh, comments, folks. I forgot to say that, but. That was kind of insightful, okay. Your faith has made you well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he says that uh, Jairus, do not be afraid, only believe, which is easier said than done. But there's so many examples of that sort of humility 
in belief in this episode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we talked about this a little bit last week because I think there was a scene in that episode before this one where he keeps telling people, tell no one. You know, and I think mm -hmm. we figured out that if, if everybody knew, he would be mobbed. It would just yeah. be a nightmare, you know. But it's like the blind guy being healed, you know. My father has preached about this before, you know. So you just made me, I was blind all my life. You made me see and you don't want me to go tell somebody? How can that be? I, I can't help myself, you know. Well, he, he probably knew that this, this is going to leak out. Right. You know. And that's like the scene there. I kind of laughed a little bit because he's like, tell no one. I'm like, well, it's kind of obvious. You just raised someone from <laughs> yeah. the dead. Yeah, really. There are four <laughs> mourners downstairs. <laughs> there are two Pharisees. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah to be fair to Jesus, <laughs> he never said she was dead. He, he said just she, said she was sleeping. sleeping. Yeah. So they could just be bad physicians, you know. Yeah. He, he primed, primed that one. Yeah. <laughs> Not a corner you want to uh, check you out. <laughs> yeah. No. He had, he had some it's communications training. <laughs> <laughs> when we were talking about the woman who, well, it would be Veronica, right, who touched his garments. And one of the other lines at the end of their encounter with each other, he says, I'm glad we found each other. And I think that's something, something I want to reflect on a little bit more, especially during Lent. We talk a lot about reconciliation and and just to think that that's how he feels when mm -hmm. we come to him, you know, tugging at his garment. It's not uh, him walking away. He stops and turns and says, so, I'm glad we found each other. Yeah, that's right. You have, the, you have the flip side of that in this episode with Ian, who's sort of the, the woman inside, <coughs> literally inside the home, but she you know, is not answering the door, so to speak. You know, the Christ will knock and, you know, we will answer kind of an approach because she's sort of, she's seen all this and all she has to do is, in the middle of preparing breakfast, turn around and s say something to Jesus and, and be healed or be, f you know, filled. And she just, you know, Chris, to your point at the end, we're kind of brought back into that sadness of her because she's just hasn't opened the door yet. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about how hard that would have been for her, for, I mean, for any of their family, but in particular, a spouse, when they mm -hmm. would leave and just, I don't know, that would have been such mixed feelings. Because in the beginning, she's so excited for Simon to right. to go and to, yeah, and to follow Jesus. And then... Even to just <coughs> go to meet him. him. Right. And then it, it would become such a, a struggle. Yeah. And even Simon at one point, I think when he's talking to Gaius, says something, well, I'm struggling a little bit with that right now, too. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, too, I, I would, it was interesting, the study of her face... When, when Jesus said he would go with, with Jairus and the group to see his little girl, and Eden's face was kind of like, I thought she was kind of like thinking, hmm, you know, maybe he can heal me or heal my problems or maybe I should share this with him. I, I don't know if that's what she was thinking, but mm -hmm. I kind of think she was, I kind of think that was going through her mind a little bit. I think her character development will be really interesting because she's a character that none of us really know that much about. Mm -hmm. Like I always laugh because Bill Kingston said one time, like we all know what happens at the end. There's no spoiler alerts here, but there are some of these characters that we dive into yeah. so deeply that we didn't know about them. And with Eden, I feel like Stephen was kind of alluding to, she believes she believed so hard, especially in season one. But simultaneously, like, Jesus has taken so much from her. Like, her um, husband's gone for these long periods of time. There's, he's not a fisherman anymore. Like, just like, she, I think she wants to believe, but it's also a struggle of this, like, I didn't know it was gonna be this big of a sacrifice. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's a really good point. And even seeing, like, then, at the very beginning, I think when Peter comes home and he's kind of, 
don't want to say like ignoring her, but kind of like maybe not. He's just very aloof. He's right. very aloof. And he says, well, they're going to come over tomorrow, the other disciples, because we haven't caught up in a while. And she's like, I haven't caught up in a while. Like, me, yeah. as if, like, we have. Yeah. <laughs> and. Well, they just talked right then and there. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, but you think about, like, man. Well, especially being gone all that time. and Yeah. All the. Know. Just. When it's all not, that other, those other layers of, like, what they must have been processing and feeling and trying to understand and yeah. even the importance of like the women in the ministry when the he sends the disciples out and they're supposed to essentially fund in the ministry right. like what an important role a huge role mm -hmm. that I think is overlooked and underappreciated like something we probably don't talk about as much but I began thinking a lot more about that like what the sacrifices they were making and the roles that they played um were so significant but well it's not like they got sent out on a camping trip you know they're out evangelizing to people who do not want to hear what they have to say or at least part of the you know half the population doesn't want to right. so it's not like they're for sure coming back if you're the spouse or the you know parent of mm -hmm. of the disciples yeah mm -hmm. And Bree, you're right. It's going to be really interesting to see how they uh, develop that Eden character. I, I, there's so many ways they could go there. Yeah. And we don't hear the, you're right, too. We don't hear hardly anything about the women. You know, we just don't know. And what a responsibility, like you said. You got to fund this. You know, they're out mm -hmm. trying to buy olive groves and, you know, <laughs> make wine and, you know, all kinds of stuff. Make mm -hmm. olive oil and... Oh. Even, like, all the household stuff that has to happen. Like, obviously before, Simon's out fishing all day. But he's still coming home early in the morning. Like, he's helping with some stuff. Like, now, like, weeks on end, she's by herself. She's taking care of everything. And so, just, like, the amount of constant sacrifice has just got to be eating away at her. In addition to, like everything else that's happening and then to have him come home and kind of just like dismiss her and right. her feelings and their time together yeah and then i got all the boys coming over to eat yeah that's chill right <laughs> but, then, that but happens. then we'll sneak out away right. classic guy line <laughs> <laughs> hey, the guys and i are going to hang out but then afterwards <laughs> we'll hang out it it is. Is. he's the only one that's married right yeah yeah, yeah. which is kind of interesting too Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he has nobody else to relate that with. Right, right. Which is crazy. Yeah. It's like, they're all, like, who cares? No one's waiting for us at home. She's on an island. My dad just bought an olive grove. I don't care what he's doing. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. One, I think it's just so perfect is Jairus. At, am I saying that right? Close enough. Jairus? Jairus? I don't know. The people don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the sack confident. You're angry. Jairus. Um, <laughs> uh, when he says, <laughs> after the Jesus raises his daughter, and he says, um, thank you. I, I have no other words, but thank you. I think that's also a really good message, because maybe not as much anymore, but still sometimes I, I feel like when I go to pray, I have to have, like, the right words or be in the right setting or whatever mm -hmm. and that's so simple like just to go with your intention your belief you don't have to explain it just be no. there nope yeah. nope thank you don't. is enough and, and just talk uh, right just or, talk. or not yeah or not that's <laughs> yeah. sometimes the best thing yeah and he says thank you and Jesus says thank you for your faith mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it still always comes back to that. It's a thankathon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and we all get into the point of, you know, I think, I do anyway. I have to really watch myself because I'm always praying for something and not thanking for what I got nearly enough, you know, or thanking for just the faith, just 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 having somebody there mm -hmm. that's a friend all the time no matter what i do yeah and no matter what a creep i am don't uh is it uh, who is it when they're at the table and he's like i don't get it 
and I think that's also just like such a good thought of like sometimes like we don't have to get it. No, you just gotta that's be right. there. Yeah, just take it in. Mm -hmm. It's there. It's always there. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else there, CB? No. No. So one one final line that that really jumped out at me. And we don't have to spend a lot of time dissecting it, but I just thought it was an no interest. Lights, please, I have plenty. <laughs> <laughs> if you have blood in your veins, help me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're standing at the door. Oh, yes. I'd, I'd never heard anything phrased quite that way, and it just it jumped out at me. We don't have, you know, I don't know what more to he dissect that, he, from it. He said that than, to, to Judas. Yeah, yeah. Other than if you have blood in your veins, help me. So it's yeah. like a maybe a sort of a desperation behind it. Yeah. That kind of, that kind of, um, that's a pretty good line, really. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> if you have, if you have anything, if you know, if you have blood in your veins, yeah, that's a, that, that is a good, that was a good, great line. Um, at the very end, I don't know, I feel like it got a little bit softer, so I don't know how many people caught this, but um, the women are talking to Veronica as the men are swimming, and one of the women says to her, like, tell us about yourself, essentially, like, you've been in pain for so long, like, what's going on with you? And she says, it's a long story. And they said, stories are who we are. Mm -hmm. I thought that was so cool because, I mean, that's what the Bible is, the stories. Yeah. That's what The Chosen is, series of stories. And, and that's so true, like, no matter kind of our stories lives are who we are in all of our yeah. lives are a story you know yeah yeah the one line that i got a big kick out of too was when uh, simon and uh gaius are working on the cistern and he says we're going to need a uh, a mason for some reassembly he goes do you know anyone he goes i might because <laughs> I, I think jesus was a mason and a carpenter and mm -hmm. Not just a carpenter. And a healer and a rabbi. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Did some jobs. Yeah, he did some stuff. <laughs> this was fun. Very. Thank you, guys. We anybody Thanks else for, have yeah. anything else to? Thanks for having, Thanks for having us on your big red couch, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> my big red couch. Yeah, super excited to get the invite from you, and just from you. Yeah. So Nobody else so invited no, us. No. And thanks again for these one pagers. Yeah, um, for all the notes that you took for us. That was yeah, really helpful. The conversation. <laughs> I can't we believe you successful. were able to pick all this up and <laughs> well, it's pretty sure amazing. Any duplicates. It's pretty amazing. I've worked on it since last week's show. So. <laughs> and for the the color coding on our outfits, I think really appreciate all your oh, guidance really? tonight. Really. Well, you know, you and I have a lot of experience <laughs> with this. So also hair and makeup. Fantastic. Hey, you're welcome. Yeah, really appreciate it. Joe, I should have worked on yours a little bit longer, but yeah. You're it's busy right. with yours. <laughs> I'm your last in the chair. You oh, Bree does a hair joke for Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, the longest in the show. Anyway, <laughs> so Father will be back next week. Please uh, tune in. I won't be here, but uh, Father will be, so it'll be a lot calmer and a lot, probably a lot better. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next week. Have a good night. God bless.